You ever looked at your inbox and thought, just another bunch of damn emails? <laughs> Me too. Well, I want you to hold on to your hats because today I kind of unearthed a treasure trove of wisdom in the most likely of places. Yeah, my email inbox. From marketing mishaps to golden nuggets of entrepreneurial savvy, I want to share with you 10 and a half eye-opening lessons that are going to change the way you view your inbox forever. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss this half lesson that's going to be at the very end because it's mighty magic. So you ready to dive in and discover the unexpected lessons lurking in your inbox? Well, then let's get started. Hey there, audacious parents. Welcome to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast, where we're not just about surviving, we're about thriving. If you're tuning in, you're not looking for just another feel-good, pat-on-the-back kind of show. No. You're here because you're ready to disrupt the status quo. You're ready because you're here to challenge your limits and to step out of the comfort zone where we know growth never happens. This is not just your average, let's all be happy with our nine to five lives kind of podcast. We're here to give you actionable strategies. We're here to dive deep into the world of side hustles, digital marketing, and smart income boosting tactics. Why you may ask? Because we're designed for parents like you. Parents juggling family expenses, childcare, and the elusive me time. We're not just about making money though, we're about designing a life. A life that you dictate, not one that's been prepackaged in a soul-sucking 9-5 box. So, if you're ready to break free and design a life that aligns with your dreams, design a life that aligns with your family, you're in the right place. The Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. What is up? What is up? What the heck is up, my Dark Horse Entrepreneurs, man? Let's get stuck right in. Let's kick off things with the classic email faux pas that landed in my inbox this morning. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to picture this. I'm sipping on my morning coffee, kind of scrolling through my emails, and bam, there it is. A promotional email that looks a little promising, yeah, but wait, it's not complete. We've all seen it, haven't we? Imagine getting an email in your inbox that says in the subject line, you purchased brackets product name with your email brackets your email. Now, it doesn't say the name of the product, and it doesn't say what your email address. That's it. No product name, no email address. It's like opening that magic gift you've been waiting for all year long, and it's Christmas, by the way, only to find it empty. Yeah, this, my dark horse entrepreneurs, is a textbook example of an email marketing facepalm. Huh? Right? You know what I'm saying? It screams out one thing loud and clear. Somebody out there skipped the testing phase. And that got me thinking, how many of us are guilty of rushing through our emails? Just get them right on out the door without a second glance. Go ahead, raise your hand. Yeah, I've done it too, right? I had this amazing summit where I was trying to invite a bunch of people in. And all of a sudden, one of the guests who were going to be speaking on my summit uh, emailed me and said, uh, Tracy, nobody's received any of the, uh, the emails promoting this summit. Ah, wah, wah, wah. So this brought me back. And I want you to remember, friends, always, always test before you send or risk looking like an inbox intruder. You see, after all, your emails are your ambassadors in the digital realm. Yeah. So let's make sure that they arrive on time at the event and dressed for the occasion. You don't want them showing up to a suit and tie event in their pajamas. Now, do we? No, 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 no. Okay. So I, I guess all said, as we are, God, we're only three minutes into this, and we're already diving deep. What's the takeaway here? Simple. It's really easy. Treat each email like it's your only shot, because quite often, sometimes it is your only shot to make a good impression. This quick test can be the difference between winning a customer or winning a spot in the junk file, the spam folder, as it may be. Now, as we move on from this email escapade, I want to dive into the power of two words in your subject line that can make a whole world of difference. But first, let me share how these two words literally stopped me in my tracks. Again, this morning, there it was, sitting there, sipping my coffee. Amidst the usual clutter, one email caught my eye. Now, it wasn't the one where it said you bought product name. The subject line said, news alert. 
man was charged with dot, dot, dot. Instantly, that email subject line had me hooked. Why? Because of those first two powerful words. News alert. It was like this, this siren call amidst a sea of mundane subject lines. But here's the thing about subject lines, as many of you may know, and if some of you don't, I'm about to share with you. They are literally the headline of your story. The right words put in that subject line can pull your readers right in. The wrong ones, well, they're just going to send your email straight into the digital wasteland, into that spam bucket, into that junk folder, or just in the delete key. Bam, right? And that's when it hit me. There was a there was a serious power in those first two words. They they set the stage for everything that followed. Not just the rest of the words in the subject line, but in the email itself. But let me make this crystal clear. In the world of email, the first two words can make or even break your message. Think of them as your opening. So we've all been to concerts. Well, I have. I go to them all the time. And sometimes the opening act is so weak that you're like, oh, what a lousy evening. It, all, it almost ruins the main event. So think of those first few words as your opening act. Are they strong enough to hold the spotlight? Are they strong enough to draw your audience in early before the main event? Yeah. Here's the catch, though. Of course, there's a catch. There's always a catch, Tracy. You can't throw in things like news alert for every email. That's like crying wolf. Yeah, you, you need to really save it for the real deal. The actual do not miss this, ladies and gentlemen. This is breaking news for your audience. This is about striking a balance, right? Of grabbing attention and staying genuine. Yeah. So the next time you're drafting that crucial email, I want you to ask yourself, are the first two words that I'm putting on here powerful enough to stop the scroll? Yeah. And if they don't, then reevaluate them. Do they promise something that my readers cannot afford to miss? Something they just go, whoa, I have to check this out. Because remember, in the inbox arena, your subject line is not only the first, but it is most often the only shot that you're going to get to make an impact. Now, speaking of impact, right, our next lesson comes from the high-flying, literally high-flying new tech tool that's changing the game for video content creators. Yeah. So as we dive into a bit of tech magic, and it's I think it's tech magic that's kind of revolutionizing the way that we think about video marketing today. It's actually, it's impacting the way I think. I stumbled across this gem in an email from entrepreneur.com. So I want you to picture this. An AI powered auto fly camera drone that follows you around, capturing your ever move. Wouldn't that be cool? Imagine filming your next explainer video while taking a walk or biking or kayaking or whatever it is that it is you love to do, all while having this drone create this seamless, dynamic video effect for you. Now, no, get me wrong, I'm probably where you're at right now, a little skeptical at first, but here's the thing. Can the drone actually act like your personal cameraman? Yeah, it could. But the more I thought about this question, the clearer it became. It wasn't just a gadget. It wasn't just a new tool. I think it could be a game changer for all you content creators. All the content creators that want to add an extra wow factor to their videos. Yeah. So here's something I want you to chew on. Embrace innovation when it comes to marketing, especially in this example, video marketing. Let the drone be your cameraman. Why not? Right? It's, it's stepping out of the traditional frame and giving your audience a whole new perspective. In this case, from on high, right? Think about the potential here. We're talking about elevating, literally and figuratively, elevating your video content with aerial shots, with action shots, with dynamic blowing shots, right? All without needing a film crew. It's not just about the tech, though. Don't get me wrong. It's a tool. It's about how you use it to tell your story. How you use it to tell your story in a way that captivates and engages. Because here's the kicker, my friends. As entrepreneurs and as marketers, we need to be constantly on the lookout for such innovations, for new innovations. And new innovative ways to use 
old innovations because they open up new avenues of creativity and engagement. Both ways, two ways, right? It's not about just keeping up with the trends. No, no, because let's not just keep up with the Joneses out there. I want you to set the trend. I want you to see something and go, I'm going to try that, but I'm going to try that the way Tracy would do it, the way John would do it, the way Jane would do it. The Dark Horse the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. That's when you, my friend, become a trendsetter. Hmm? Yeah. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, the coolest tech in the world isn't going to make up for a lame-ass story. I don't know how it's... I could say lackluster and be a lot nicer about it, but let's be honest. If you have a lame-ass story, all the tech in the world... It, hey, if you polish a turd, it's still a turd. There you go. Your content needs to be king it's got to be top charts and then all the tools that you use well they just kind of shine up your royal cherry you with me okay so now we're going to shift our perspective here a little bit let's pivot from high-tech drones to a different kind of high-flying idea i want to pivot to a perspective that really really got me thinking when i saw it it's one about our info hungry consumers that are out there right this is courtesy of an insight direct from the great Bob Block. It's, it's about those folks, and you've seen them, I've seen them. It's about those folks who devour every piece of content that we put out there, but they never seem to apply it. You know, those folks that are info junkies, right? They just consume, 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 consume. Now, here's what Bob Bly said, because Bob Bly made this compelling point. Just because some people are collecting all your information projects like treasure troves, right? The collectibles, but aren't necessarily putting them into action doesn't mean they're not valuable customers. Let me say that again, ladies and gentlemen. Just because there are people out there collecting your information projects like treasures and not using them doesn't mean they're not valuable customers. In fact, for many of them, gathering this information, it's a hobby. It's an intellectual pursuit. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that for my information collectors that are out there listening right now. Because here's the gem I want you to take away from this. Never, ever underestimate the armchair readers that are in your audience. They are your silent audience members. They often are even your silent advocates. They might not be your most vocal customers, but they're quietly absorbing everything you have to offer. And you never know who they're telling about your next amazing product. Hmm? Kind of an interesting angle, right? Yeah. See, we often focus on just the action takers, on the doers that are in our audience, the ones that are out there applying every tip and every trick and every technique, maybe even, you know, sharing the results with us. But let's not forget the silent majority that's out there, those who find joy in learning. The simple act of discovering new ideas and new possibilities they are still an integral part of our audience, aren't they? Yeah, I can feel you nodding right now. And here's the thing. A lot of times those folks get involved with folks that you do not know, and they share those ideas. He goes, you know, I heard this amazing idea on the Dark Horse Entrepreneur, and it, it kind of counters what you're talking about. You know, And then they share that, and then that other person comes and checks you out and becomes a doer. Ah, see? Ah, now see, this viewpoint shifts how you create and share content, if you think about it. It's not just about creating actionable advice. It's about feeding curiosity. It's about sparking imagination. And it's about offering value in various forms across multiple platforms, whether it's applied immediately or simply appreciated. You feel me? All right. Okay. Now, on the topic of offering value, let's move into a marketing tactic that, well, let's just say missed the mark, shall we? As we tackle this marketing lesson I'm about to tell you about, I think it's a marketing lesson that's all too common and it's all too often overlooked. And it's the art of pricing transparency. Now, this anecdote I'm about ready to tell you is, is a classic. It's a classic what not to do from an email that landed in my inbox just the other day. All these lessons I'm sharing with you come from my inbox. But let me set the scene. I received an email that was essentially a long form sales letter. No surprise there, right? We get them all the time. But as I scrolled through, I noticed a chart comparing their $629 air cleaner with others. The chart was bold and it was eye-catching. But here's the problem. The kicker, you might say. The actual price 
after the 300 discount was hidden way down in the fine print. So anyone scrolling straight to the bottom, like yours truly, myself, yeah, only sees the $629 price and they missed the real deal. So this brings up our golden rule of the day that I want to make sure you do not forget. Always remember, in pricing, clarity is king. Don't bury the lead, right? Especially if it's a $300 discount. You don't ever want to do that. If you have a great offer, don't hide it. Flaunt it. Put it out there in front of everybody, okay? The email could have been a huge win. But I think by burying the true value of the offer way down in the fine print, they lost a chance to engage potential customers like me. Look, here's the thing. It's a simple truth in marketing. Be clear and be upfront. There you go. Bam. That's it. Go for it. Go forth and make money. No. <laughs> See, here's the thing. When you're clear and you're upfront, your audience will appreciate it. And on top of that, you're going to build trust and credibility. Know, like, and trust you, right? That's what we all want. We hear it all the time in marketing. And trust, my friends, let's, let's be completely honest here, is the bedrock of all successful marketing. Now, we've talked tech, and then we've talked a few marketing tactics, but now I want to pivot to a trend that's, oh, I don't know, it's about as creative as it is profitable. Another one from the email world. I want to enter into the world of print-on-demand journals. So this is a little bit different than just the emails, but hear me out, okay? I've come across this fascinating email from Rochelle Rofe, and it got me thinking about the power of per personalization in today's marketplace. This point was further driven home by later in the same day, while I was scrolling through Facebook, there was a personalized picture of a t-shirt with my last name on it, and then this cool saying. Now, obviously, they got my last name from the fact that I was on Facebook so they can get that information, but they integrated it into the graphic and presented it to me. Ha! Oh, I was hooked. Here's the scoop when it comes to the, the email from Michelle Rove. Here's the scoop. She's not just selling journals, right? And I'm, I'm going to mention, in case I lost it, right? We're, gonna t we're talking about the power of print-on-demand journals, but these aren't just any journals that she's selling here. They're personalized. They come with a customer's name emblazoned across the cover inside. It's mostly blank pages, but you know, they'll sprinkle in a few motivational quotes and, you know, or inspiring journaling prompts. Essentially, what you'll be doing here is selling a piece of personal identity, a blank canvas, if you will, for someone's thoughts, ideas, and maybe even some doodles associated with you. And this brings up that next insight I want you to walk away with in today's episode. Customization is the secret ingredient in the print-on-demand success, right? Because I get something that's all about me. Look, I'm wearing a shirt right now. It says Tracy. On the back, it says Dark Horse Entrepreneurs. I got the logo. And the rest of the shirt is mass-produced. <laughs> Customization is the secret ingredient in print-on-demand success. It's about giving customers something that's uniquely theirs. Speaks to them on a level so personal, they're like, how the hell did you know? Yeah, think about it. In a world where everything is high speed, mass produced, and, and, and mass impact, these personalized journals stand out as this little independent piece of just them. They're not just products, they're keepsake. They're a part of someone's personal journey and they become an experience with you. The Dark Horse, the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Yeah. They associate you with that journey and that experience. We're talking about, so it's about creating experiences. I've told you in the past couple of episodes. And here's the beauty of it. You don't even need a massive inventory. You just need a cool design, a little print-on-demand service, and there's a, there's a bunch of them out there. And, and this knack for understanding what resonates with your audience. And I want you to know your audience so well that it's like you're some, you hired some FBI profiler. And someone's going, man, how do they know that about me? That's a little bit scary. It's not hard. It's not difficult. If you think about it, in the big scheme of things, this is really more than a business opportunity. It's a chance to tap into the heart of what makes personalization uh, so compelling, especially in today's market where everything is just kind of, you know, mass produced, like I already mentioned. Whether it's uh, a personal diary that you give as a gift, 
or it's a creative outlet for someone to scribble down their dreams in their journals. These journals meet a growing desire for products that are as unique as the people you're selling them to. Yeah, okay. I want to jump from the charm of personalized journals. That was a little bit of a tangent there, so I'm going to rein this back in. But I want to switch gears to a story about, well, if I think about it, it's really a story about nothing. Yeah, you heard that right. Our next bit I'm going to go into is an engaging story, uh, literally about nothing. And yet, the story was so captivating. Yeah, you might say we're going to take a turn into the quirky and the unexpected. Now, did you ever think a story about nothing could be riveting? Now, for my Seinfeld uh, show watchers, you know a little bit of what I'm talking about here. You may have seen some episodes of Seinfeld. And really, Seinfeld uh, used to say way back when, when he was doing the show, it's about nothing, right? But that's not where we're going here. I want to introduce you to the storytelling prowess of Daniel Thrussell, right? Now, this guy can weave a tale about the most mundane events and somehow make story completely captivating. Now, here's the gist. I read an email from Thrussell that detailed his adventure of simply opening a door. Yeah, you heard me right. Yeah, he thought he had hit someone with the door, but no one was there. And that's it. That was the story. And yet, the way he told it, he had me hooked from start to finish. So this brings us to a profound realization, ladies and gentlemen. A compelling story can be about nothing, yet it could still mean everything to the person reading it. It's not always about the plot. It's not always about the characters or some amazing transformation. Sometimes it's just about how the story is told. Now, Thrussell's skills lie in his ability to take an ordinary moment, infuse a little tension, sprinkle a little humor, and a lot of relatability. I guess you could say it's a masterclass in storytelling, showing us how the power of a story lies not just in the content, but in its delivery, in its pace, and in its rhythm. That creates this ability to connect with us on a completely human level. And as entrepreneurs and marketers, there's a lesson in there for us to learn. We often think we need some grand life-changing stories to engage our audience. Sometimes all it takes is a fresh perspective on the everyday. A good story, well told, can turn the mundane into the completely extraordinary. Now, while we're on the topic of extraordinary, the next thing we're going to talk about here covers a topic that's been around for a while. I actually have had a a gentleman on my show, Justin Popovich, who was on my show, and he runs a business all around this particular arena. So we're going to shift from storytelling to the art of content creation. Let's delve into a topic that's evolved right before my eyes. And here's what I mean. Because right now we're in a world brimming with AI enhancements. And I love me some AI. I like geeking out and getting all into it. What becomes the role of good old PLR? Yeah, private label rights. And for those of you who don't know about it, I'm going to put a link down in the show notes to an episode all about PLR. There's actually probably two or three of them that I've done. And uh, one of those would be my friend, Justin Popovich, who has a company who creates PLR for entrepreneurs and marketers out there, right? So private label rights content, especially now with tools like ChatGPT and Google Bard, I think I think the game is a changing, right? So in my emails, once again, that's where all these lessons are coming from. I came across a fascinating offer for a PLR course centered around, you guessed it, ChatGPT. Yeah, a PLR course about how to use ChatGPT. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Someone sat down and used AI to create content that you can sell as your own about how to use AI. It's kind of got me thinking. In the era of where AI can churn out content at lightning speed, and trust me, it does it really, really fast, what has become of the human creator? Hmm? Yeah, here's a thought to ponder. In the era of AI, it's going to be the human touch in content that remains irreplaceable. Let me say that again. It is the human touch in content creation that remains irreplaceable. Yes, I get it. AI is amazing. AI might be able to generate content, might even be able to generate great content, but can't it cannot replicate 
the nuances, the emotions, and the unique perspectives that you and I have as human beings that only a human can bring to the table. So I, at the end of the day, this isn't to say that uh, AI tools like ChatGPT aren't useful. I use them all the time. I love them. But because they are incredibly powerful and can be a huge asset in content creation. Don't get me wrong. I get it. They're tools. They're not replacements. Here's the thing. For AI, AI bashers out there, let me say, would you go to a automotive technician and say, dude, why are you using that brand new automated wrench? No, it's a tool. He's the expert. He's going to use the best tool at his disposal. So it's okay to use the best tools at your disposal because they can create great ideas. They can create structured articles. They can even create decent drafts. But it's going to be that automotive technician. And you, as the human content creator, that's going to put the soul into the content. Yeah, that's where you come in. See, it's about using AI to enhance your creativity, not replace it. That's going to blend technology with the irreplaceable human elements, your experiences, your insights, your voice. That's where the true magic of content creation lies, even with AI. And when it comes to blending technology and human insight, our next little bit I'm gonna, we're going to dive into is this well-known company that saw a way to boost their sales, thanks in part to digital marketing. It's a sweet success story that you do not, or is it donut, want to miss. You do not want to miss. That was a bad joke. You'll get it in a moment. But as we move from a, the digital world and AI and content creation, let's step back into the real world with a real world success story. I want you to sink your teeth into a delicious case study. Yep, I'm talking about Krispy Kreme. K-R-I-S-P-Y-K-R-E-M-E. -E. And for those of you that have never had a Krispy Kreme donut, oh, they are donut connoisseurs. And they've sweetened their business with a little sprinkle of digital marketing magic. In an email that was about as tempting as their glazed treats, I read about Krispy Kreme's impressive 23% boost in sales. And guess what was at the core of all this sugary success? It was a hefty dose of digital marketing prowess. Emails, yeah. They've learned about leveraging everything from social media campaigns to targeted online ads to emails, and it's paying off in a big, delectable way. The Dark Horse, the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. So here's a sticky note for all of you entrepreneurs and marketers out there. Sweeten your marketing strategy with digital glaze, just like Krispy Kreme. Combining traditional business with modern marketing techniques can yield you mouth-watering results. Is, I think the thing here is that the story isn't just about donuts. It's really about adaptability. It's about understanding the changing landscape of your consumer's engagement. Yeah, how are they engaging with you? I just shift you from one way to the other. I can remember early days in my career, I became an expert in catalog marketing. You're yeah, not doing a whole lot of that anymore. Right? I had to adapt. Krispy Kreme took their classic beloved product and propelled it right into the digital age, meeting their customers where they are online. Now, for any business owner, I think this becomes a bit of a wake-up call. See, it's not, it's not just about what you're selling. It's about how you're connecting with your audience. In this age, digital marketing, I don't think it's an option anymore. It's a necessity. It's a key ingredient in your recipe for success. So, all right. Now, we're going to shift our focus from that sweet success story to a bit of a cautionary tale. And it's, it's one that highlights an absolute necessity of integrity in business. Yeah? You're like, well, of course you've got to be integrity in business. What are you talking about, Tracy? Well, uh, hold on here. Let me tell you. Because this brings us to the case of Udemy. Now, they are a popular online learning platform. Many of you have probably heard of them. If not, go look them up, right? And they, le they learned a legal lesson the hard way. Now, here's 
as I remember it, and now as I understand it, here's what unfolded. Then Udemy was hit with a class action lawsuit over their pricing practices. What was the allegation you may ask so you don't have to go look up for it? Well, the allegation was using fake reference prices to promote courses. They claimed to offer massive discounts on courses, supposedly marked way down from, their, from the original prices. Here's the question. Were those original prices ever real? That's what the legal scuffle all, was all about. So here, I think, is what brings out a fundamental truth. In pricing, honesty isn't the best policy. Honesty is the only policy. There it is. I said it. Here's the thing. Misleading your customers might bring some short-term gains. You might bring... You might, hey, we're 50% we're off, right? No one else is doing this. 75, 80% off, right? The original is $1,000. We got it marked down to $49.99. You might bring some folks in for short-term gains. But my friends, that is a long-term recipe for real disaster. Udemy's case is a stark reminder for all of us in the digital marketplace. Our audiences, yeah, they're savvy. They're not dumb. They're not stupid. They might not know everything about what it is you're trying to teach them, but they are savvy. They can and they will see through the smoke and the mirrors. So when you put a price tag on your product or your service, make sure it reflects the true value. And I mentioned that in a previous episode, the true value that you're bringing to them. Now, if you're offering a discount, ensure that discount is a real genuine discount. So if your value is $19.97 and you're discounting it $400, cool, that's great. But make sure there's $19.97 of value in there. Transparency isn't about, to me, I don't think transparency is about avoiding legal pitfalls, although you want to, right? It's about building trust, like I said earlier, right? Integrity, building that trust, know, like, and trust you with your audience. It's about establishing a reputation of fairness and honesty. And in the long run, that reputation is going to be worth more than its weight in gold. So now I want to step into the my, my now favorite segment of the podcast, the Whiskered Wisdom segment, where I'm going to try and distill the lessons from the curious and the bizarre. And today, the downright mysterious into a single little tidbit for you. I want you to buckle up for the enigma that is Diego Hernando and his avalanche of emails. What the heck are you talking about, Tracy? Well, hold on. Let me, let me bring you up to speed. Here's what I want you to do, though. I want you to picture this. Here I am again, once again, crack open the laptop, sipping my coffee. I open my inbox, and it's like deja vu on steroids. Email after email after email, all from one man, Diego Hernando. 86 emails in 17 days, ladies and gentlemen, six of them actually made it to my inbox and a whopping 80 of them dumped into my junk folder. Yep, they landed in spam. That, my friends, is like a digital version of Groundhog Day, except it's just Diego endlessly repeating over and over and over again. Now, here's the thing. I don't know Diego from Adam, but these emails, they were a mix of offers, updates, and maybe, maybe even a slight digital cry for help. I mean, blink twice. If you need us, Diego, we'll be right there to come help you. Here's the kicker, though. What can we, as digital marketers and entrepreneurs, learn from Diego's relentless inbox invasion? Well, let's be real. Monitor your damn email frequency. Don't be a Diego. Don't be a Diego in someone's inbox, so ladies and gentlemen. It's a thin line be between being persistent and just damn well being a nuisance. Cross it, and you're most likely going to end up in the trash bin, right? Or the spam box when it comes to sales. It, you're just, it's not going to happen. Now, I think Diego's case is more of an inbox oddity, but it, it is a cautionary tale about the importance of balance when it comes to email marketing. You want to stay on your audience's radar. I get it. You want them to see you. They want to be top of mind, but you don't want to bombard them. And you risk becoming more of an annoyance than an asset. Maybe you start becoming an ass hat instead of an asset. Uh -huh. Think about that, okay? But it's about striking that balance about being present without being overwhelming. And balance can change uh, depending on who you are, what industry you're in, 
and what you're doing right now. And here's what I mean by that. In some industries, sending an email a day, someone will get it and they're, and they're totally cool with that. If you set the baseline, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to send you a daily motivational email. I get some of those and I love them. Set the expectations. Now you might tell someone as you've built that relationship, hey, I'm getting ready to go into this launch phase. You might see some more emails more than usual from me. If you don't want them, hit unsubscribe. I understand, right? Now they're, you've, you've told them and all of a sudden they start receiving two and three emails a day for you. Now you want to do this for a shorter period of time, okay? But all that said to all my Diegos out there, remember quality over quantity. Make each email count and your audience will actually begin to look forward to hearing from you. So, okay, as we wind down today, let's recap the treasure trove of lessons we've unearthed in the most simplest of places, our email inboxes. We talked about the importance of email testing, the power of effective subject line, remember those two words, uh -huh. the innovative use of video tools. We've learned the value of every type of customer, the significance of pricing transparency and the creative potential of print on demand journals. We also dove into a little storytelling with David Thrussell discuss the relevance of PLR in the age of AI, discuss both of them, PLR and the age of AI. Uh, we celebrated some digital marketing triumphs, our friends over at Krispy Kreme, and navigated the legal intricacies of honest pricing with Udemy. And of course, who can forget the curious case of Mr. Diego. Diego, I hope you're okay out there. Again, blink twice if you need us, we'll be right there. And his, uh, and Diego's uh, email onslaught into my inbox. Each of these stories, as quirky or as serious as they may be, underscores a fundamental truth. There's wisdom everywhere, right? Everywhere in every one of your daily emails. It's all about keeping your eyes open, your mind curious, and being ready to learn from the everyday that is everywhere. Hey, look, if you're really hungry for more insights when it comes to emails, especially on how to grow your email list like a pro, maybe you want to check out episode 417. Uh, it was entitled 17 Expert Methods to Grow Your Email List. It's packed with a number of strategies that can transform your email marketing game. And I'll throw a couple others. I believe there's a couple more out there. I'm going to go back and take a quick look at them. I'll throw the links down in the show notes if you want to check them out. And now, here's the really important part of the show. I want to hear from you. What are some of the unique lessons that you've picked up from your email inbox? Any email marketing tips you want to share? Maybe it's a hilarious mishap that you'd like to share, right? I'd love to get these stories and share them with the audience. Drop us a comment. Send us an email, Tracy at darkhorseschooling.com. Reach out on, on social media. I'm, on, I'm across all the border. Go to the website. You'll see all the social medias out there. Here's the thing. Your stories and your insights are what make the Dark Horse community really, really special. You can go to darkhorseentrepreneur.com and what you'll see down there in the lower right hand corner, down in the lower right hand corner is a little microphone. Click that microphone, leave a voicemail. That's how easy I have made it for you. You could be driving right now. Go to the website, click the link in the show notes, bring it to the website, click that little microphone button down there and leave a voicemail. You don't even need to type anything in. How about that? As always, thanks for tuning into the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. If you have found even a little bit of value in today's episode, don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss out on the insights that I try to share here, whether they're mine or, or any of the folks out in the audience or maybe someone I got in my email. Box. Remember, in the race of entrepreneurship, being a dark horse often means that you are just a few insightful strides away from leading the rest of the pack. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, Keep checking your inbox, think successfully, and take action. Hey, my Dark Horse Entrepreneur parents, thanks for tuning in. If this episode struck a chord, share it with a fellow parent hustler. Let's grow our tribe that thrives, not just survives. For more insights and a community that totally gets it, join our Facebook group at www.darkhorseschooling.com backslash tribe. Think successfully and take action.